Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So I first beat Scylla level 60 on May 18th. However, there were some inaccuracies in what I said during that video. So I'm just recording a second version of that video. Now, if you want to look over my party and their equipment for what I have to beat Scylla, I'll go over this uh, near the end of the video. In the video description will be a quick link to the time of where I start talking about my party. So with that said, I'm just going to begin. Oh, I should quickly mention that uh, for my party, just as a quick reference, for my damage dealers, there's a 4-star Elwyn, 4-star Cherry, and 5-star Leaden. And then for healers, I'm bringing a 4-star Chris as well as a 5-star Liana. So you can see that like in terms of star levels, my characters for the Legion of Glory team aren't very high. But it was enough to take on Scylla level 60. Although it's definitely not enough yet for Scylla level 65. Alright, so let's begin the fight. So, there's some very important points about Scylla. Okay? First is that Scylla, which ability he use, she uses on the first turn is random. She could use Oceanic Horror, she could use Spawn, or she could use Summon Leviathan. Okay? If she uses Spawn to summon the Tentacle Spawn, that Tentacle Spawn will spawn a second unit. And since on the first turn, that's when Scylla uses the Raging Waves ability, uh, it will also activate on the spawns. So that can actually mess up your run entirely. So for this, if, if Scylla uses Oceanic Horror or Summon Leviathan in this run, you'll be fine. If she uses Spawn, then you have to slightly modify your strategy. So I'll probably end up doing a second video. Uh, covering when Scylla uses Spawn, and how you would beat her there. Alright, the other major thing about Scylla to mention is that for every debuff Scylla has, it gains an additional 8% attack and defense bonus. Okay, This attack and defense bonus, um, how do you say it? It's For this level, for the level 60 Scylla, you can kind of safely ignore it. However, if you're talking about the level 65 version, you really can't afford to debuff the Scylla properly because if it keeps stacking attack and defense, it's going to be harder to kill and it gets more attack. Now, with that said, the debuffs that reduce attack and defense, they reduce it by 20% attack and 20% defense, right? So if you have each of those, they're, she's losing 20% attack and defense and she gets back 16% attack, 16% defense. So those two buffs are actually okay at least for level 60 Scylla. I haven't challenged level 65 to say whether, you know, you could give her less defense but have to take on, you know, 8% additional attack. I'm not too sure about that one. So, in any case, what this really means is Almeda, which I used for the level 55 version, is not the best character to use for Scylla because that random debuff applied by Almeda could be buffing his attack and defense, right? The flip side is, your characters should be reasonably strong enough so that the 8% attack and defense don't matter all that much. So, just something for your consideration though. Alright, so, let's now talk about... Now, let's, I'm going to start deploying my characters and then change up their skills to the appropriate skills for fighting Scylla level 60. So the very first thing is, the most important part is to put Leden and Elwyn at the, on the front lines because they need to be able to move into range to attack the Scylla from turn 2. With 3 movement, they have to be at the very front, otherwise they won't be able to reach. So that's the very first thing. Uh, then the next thing is, you know, you put Chris behind them. Liana can go at the very end, because she's using prayer and again anyways. And Cherry can also go at the back, because Cherry has huge amount of movement. So, there we go, that's my party. Are there other characters you can use? Of course, because Scylla is Legion of Glory and Meteor, right? Characters like Zerida would be great as a damage dealer, right? You could use Angelina if you have her leveled up. That's another great character. And, you know, you can see here, right? L like, Lard and Scott could be used, except for the fact that the terrain is Swamp, so they cannot move very well. So that's why I don't recommend Calvary characters in general. But if you have, like, an Assassin Deedheart, or Die Heart, I really don't know how you pronounce it to be honest. The Japanese seem to pronounce it Dihato, and then, you know, 
I have not actually heard the English pronunciation of this. So in any case, uh, yeah, as an assassin, uh, Die Hard would be fine too. And Narm could be used, but I truly don't recommend it. Yeah. So the interesting about Narm is because Narm with Uller's bow could be three range, she could be constantly attacking at three range and take no retaliation damage, right? Because Scylla only has two range. So there's just an interesting note, right? You you can with Uller's bow, you can make any range character have three range, and they could attack Scylla outside of her attack range, giving you con constant attacks without taking any damage. All right. With all that said, I'm ready to begin. This this fight, I'm going to use the Legion of Glory team. And oh, sorry, there's actually two last things I should mention. First, Scylla's Raging Waves. Okay. After taking action, it deals 0.4 times damage to enemies within two blocks, right? And as I said, it triggers with the spawn units as well. This damage is only triggered once every three turns. So it's kind of like a cycle. The first turn, Poseidon's Curse, the Raging Waves will be triggering, depending on regardless of which skill Scylla uses. Second turn, it's down. Third turn, it's down. Fourth turn, it's still down. And then it refreshes, right? So, you know, uses this, let's say, uses this skill. Then it's down, then it's down, then it's down for one more turn, and then it re goes back to the original skill that she first used. So it's a consistent cycle, at least for this level 60 version. Level 65 is different. Alright, so let's talk about the skills on my heroes. And for this fight, the very first thing is I want mass maids on both of my characters, melee attackers, because Scylla actually does not hit all that hard. You know, I actually don't need the Phallax units to tank uh, the hit from Scylla. Thus, mass mates. Second thing, right? Ledin, because I'm focusing on attack, I prefer him to have Burning Sun and, and Divine Guard, so he can consistently output damage. That makes Elwyn my faction buffer. And his other skill, I'm actually going to bring Sword Soul. And the reason for Sword Soul is to remove all the buffs from the Leviathan. So, that is everything with regards to skills. And, yeah, on the. Oh, one last change. Cherry. For this particular fight, I don't want reinforcements. I want lightning speed and lightning, the combination of both skills, attack skills. So, that is everything at this point. So, let's begin the fight. These little minor changes in the skills may seem minor, but they're absolutely vital to your success. Alright, so let's begin by moving everybody but Ledin, because you want to faction buff last on turn one. So let's everyone is moving up. And I'm going to place them all, you know, as far as they can go, which is lined up along here. Alright, and the last character, Elwyn to move, will Faction buff. And this is the first turn. So, Scylla uses Oceanic Horror. The ideal, to be honest, is actually if Scylla uses Summon Leviathan. Because if it summons Leviathan, I can use my Sword Soul right away. And then again, Elwyn right after that. Uh, since it didn't, you know, I'll have to hold off on using Sword Soul. You can't use Sword Soul, and, and uh, sorry, Sword Soul is exclusively for dealing with the Leviathan. So, all right. So that's been said. Let's begin my attack. So let's start things off with Ledin using Burning Sun, right? Uh, actually, I need to heal up Elwyn, right? So let's just heal with Liana to start. And now everyone else will attack. So let in. Burning Sun attack on the Scylla. Sword Soul? No, no Sword Soul. Just a regular attack from Elwyn. And then... Uh... I'm going to actually use lightning speed right now. 
because that way Gale can activate and give Cherry more attack turns. Alright, so, and to finalize things, I'm going to be using the attack skill from Chris, which will also do some healing for my characters. So there we go. And... Scylla uses Spawn. I end up taking a bit of damage. Alright, so quick point about this turn. Every time it uses spawn, okay, Cherry should kill off the tentacle spawn. So let's have her use her lightning attack on the tentacle spawn. And that will activate Wild Princess or Gale. Okay. With that activation for her second attack, she's going to use the same skill, lightning, on Scylla herself. I'm actually going to basically ignore this tentacle spot. So everyone else is going to continue attacking Scylla. And you can see there's a two-turn cooldown still on Poseidon's Curse. So, I'm going to, as I said, I'm just going to keep attacking Scylla in the meantime. And I'm actually going to have Liana do a range attack on the tentacle spawn. Because I know my Liana can absolutely kill it, right? It only has 7,000 hit points. So that's an easy kill. And then to, final, to finish things off, Chris will do a range attack with her other attack skill, which will heal up everybody as well. So there we go. So now it finally uses the Summon Leviathan skill. Took a while. This turn, okay, on Scylla, level 60, whenever there is one turn left on Poseidon's Curse, Scylla will always do a regular melee strike. So on this turn, Leden will Divine Guard up. So he is responsible for tanking this melee strike from Scylla. And then I'm going to have Elwyn, as I said, use Sword Soul to take down the Leviathan. So there we are. You know, if you have a really powerful Elwyn, you could probably get away with using Roar instead of Sword Soul. Uh, my Elwyn, even with 1300 attack, currently cannot kill off the Leviathan with Roar. So that's just a heads up. The difference is that Sword Soul does 1.8 times damage, whereas Roar does 1.3 times. So that difference made all the... It was, that was all the difference. Okay. As a quick note, uh, Liana, she was she had minus mobility from the tentacle attack, right? But because of Chris, her talent dispels one debuff from a ally, friendly unit within two blocks. So that's why Liana can still move. So that's also why I shifted Chris over to attack. So that Liana was two blocks away from Chris. Just thought I should mention that too. So there's a lot of little uh, synergies in this fight between the characters that you use. In any case, let's move Liana over so that Liana can again Elwyn at this point. And Elwyn is going to attack Scylla. Alright. And same with Cherry. Stacking on as much damage as I can on Scylla. And then I'm going to use redemption, uh, the attack skill once more. So there we go. There is the four turn cycle for the Scylla boss. And you just repeat this cycle until Scylla is dead. Right. So now we're back to the first turn of the cycle where Scylla will once again use Oceanic Horror, and Raging Waves will activate. So, yes. that means get everybody back. You need to get out of range. That's really it. So, retreat. Back to those original tiles that I was standing on. If you can't get the character, 
back to the original tile, as in Chris, just retreat her back. It's not a big deal if she's not on the original one. You just need to... You just really need to just pull back. That's all it is. So, let's have Liana heal up Lemon. And... I want to move everybody else before I move Elwyn, because of the, she has the faction buff this turn. So this downturn is actually perfect, that's a side note. Because Chris, for example, both her attack skills are down, right? Elwyn needs to move back to faction buff anyways. So it just works out perfectly. Alright, so I'm moving Chris back, and Elwyn back to faction buff. So there's Oceana Korra, and it hits Elwyn again. So, obvious who needs healing. Alright, let's send in Ledin to attack to begin things off. Actually, what I'm going to do is... Yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's have Ledin attack first. And then Cherry. And then, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pray her up. Because both of my attackers are damaged. Or actually, all three of my attackers are damaged, right? Elwyn, Cherry, and Ledin. So, that's why I pray her right now. And that way, Elwyn can now attack. And... Finishing things off will be Chris, which would do another heal. So there we go. And now, as before, it does the tentacle spawns. So strategy ends up being the exact same as before, right? Keep attacking with everyone else. Liana will use her attack to kill off the lesser tentacle spawn. Chris will shift over to apply the debuff removal on Liana. And Cherry will kill off the regular tentacle spawn with lightning. And I'm going to use lightning again because of the three round cooldown. So as long as you use lightning, right, it will re it will the cooldown is the same as uh, Scylla's cooldown of three on her, his skills. So as long as I use it up this turn, then it will be available the next time Scylla does a tentacle spawn. All right, so continuing my attacks. And over here, Ledin will use Burning Sun. And finally, Chris. And here we are. Leviathan summon. It uses Abyssal Lurker, which... Is that the plus defense skill? It is. So, you can see here, right? It has plus 50, 1 buff, 2 buffs, 3 buffs, 4 buffs. And that is why Roar is so dangerous to use, actually, in fact. Because you actually need to remove this plus 50% defense buff, right? The other 3 are okay, but this one needs to be removed. And that is precisely why I bring... Elwyn with Sword Soul. Purely to remove that buff. Alright, so I need to crush the sea monster. And you can see right now that Sword Soul is on cooldown, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to attack first, which will actually hit the Leviathan and do absolutely no damage. But the whole point of that was to set things up so Liana can use a game on Elwyn. 
so that he can use Sword Soul. So there we go. With the Sword Soul attack, the Leviathan will die. Which then allows my other characters to attack. So let's do it. Lightning speed. And this is the turn where Scylla will attack because there's one cooldown left on Poseidon's Curse. So, the Vanguard again. And a ranged attack from Chris. As a quick aside, if you use Almeda instead of Chris, it would be reasonably similar, right? Almeda would, her talent would do one heal, right? If she uses Holy Word, she would do a second heal, or if she uses a regular healing thing, she would have the heal along with her talent heal. So it would be two heals, so it would be very similar to Chris. Alright, let's continue the fight. I mean, we're back to the original cycle where uh, Scylla will use Oceanic Horror as well as Raging Waves, right? So as long as I get back, I'm safe. So, shifting everybody back. Chris is on this side this time, so whatever. We'll move back. Move Liana back. Actually, let's move Chris back first because of her talent. And then that way, Liana can also heal them both up. Right? Her talent will heal Chris. Yep. And then finally, Elwyn back with the faction buff. Ah, Oceanicor hit a different target this time. Cherry. So here we go. Yes. Start of the cycle once more. Hi and since it hit Cherry, I'm going to start things off with Elwyn. Because Elwyn is the guy who has defense break. Effectively, it would be a 12% defense decrease on Scylla. If it kicks in. Which it didn't. But that's fine. Yes. Yeah. It's just an extra damage effect, but you don't need it. So let in. And then... Prayer. And then... Cherry's attack. And then finally... Chris. There we go. And Scylla does the spawn again, which will hit Liana. So the cycle continues endlessly. But with that said, Scylla is nearly dead. So. Lightning attack on the regular tentacle spawn. Lightning attack on Scylla. Liana, ranged attack on the lesser tentacle spawn. And Chris, ranged attack on Scylla. Elwyn, melee attack on Scylla, and yes. then Ledin currently does not have Divine Guard up. So I can choose to either attack or activate Divine Guard, either yes. option. Let's just activate Divine Guard. Well, with Scylla cl so it's close, it. you know what, let's attack. Because next turn, it will attack me, so whatever. Let's see how much damage I do without it. 3,500. So there you go. Without Divine Guard, Leden does absolutely no damage. 
All right, so Leviathan is up. As an interesting note, this turn, if it had used Abyssal Lurker, I can actually do nothing about it. Because if you look, right, Elwyn has two turns left on Sword Soul. So if it actually used Abyssal Lurker, I would be completely unable to do damage to Scylla. Just an interesting point. Uh, but that's not actually not a problem, Rudyo. You just wait a turn, you know, and then next turn kill it, and then, then probably you would be able to finish off Scylla after that. Anyways, since it didn't use it, I have a turn to kill off Scylla, and I'm going to take full advantage by attacking with everyone to get the victory. So with oh, <gasps> whoops. Well, in any case, let's divine guard let in, right? And because I actually have access to a gain, I could actually gain Elwin to get the finish. So here we go with the final attack from Elwin. Scylla is cleared on around turn 12. So this is Scylla if it uses Oceanic Horror first. Alright, so my party. And for my. Yeah. For Liana, it doesn't really matter in terms of bonds. Max, 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 7. Seven. So I do have Liana's bonds maxed before the release of Time Rift 10. Chris is next. And for Chris's bonds, again, this, okay, quick note about this one. It only increases defense and magic defense, so it does not actually increase the amount of attack damage you do. So this upgrade is almost optional, you know, just so you're aware. Max, 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 one, because again, this is a defense upgrade, so it didn't matter for Scylla 60, and then three on the attack and int increase skill. It's because I'm missing Bursting Heart Keys. If I had more, I would upgrade it. But, you know, the main goal of Chris was more to heal anyways, so granted, the healing is affected by how much damage she does. So that was Chris. Let's look at Ledin. Ledin has max, 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 5 and 5. Right? Again, lack of bursting heart keys is preventing me from upgrading it. But the heart bond is all the way up at level 9. If I, As soon as I gather enough of these Fetters of Vigor, he will be finished in terms of the heart bond. So Ledin is nearly completely maxed, which makes him basically ready for even Scylla level 65. Elwyn. And without doubt, Elwyn is my current limitation and the reason why I cannot challenge level 65 Scylla yet. In terms of bonds, he's quite upgraded. Max, 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 5, and 7. Heart bond is only level 2, right? The main reason he's not, he's my limiting factor is because of his talent. His self-heal currently only has 60% chance at 4 stars. So until I get him to 5 stars where it's 80% chance, or even 6 stars so it's 100% chance, yeah, Elwyn is my limiting factor in this fight. So that's why I've been grinding his shards, and I'll keep grinding it until he hits 6 stars. Last but not least, Cherry. Or Cherie. Alright, and Cherry, as I prefer to call her, is max max 7, and the reason this is 7 is again, her, her uh, soldier bond does defense and magic defense, so it doesn't affect her attack value, hence no particular need to max this out. Uh, toughness Bond is level 3, and Strength Bond is level 5. Her Heart Bond is a measly level 1. But she has enough survivability this way, right? She can survive Oceanic Horror and so on, so it's perfectly fine. So that is pretty much my party. In terms of equipment, Cherry Last Knight level 50, Assault Ring level 50, Gargoyle Jacket level 40, Drawman Gandir's Eye level 20. 
this was enough to survive and to do good a decent amount of damage. She, I suspect she will need better equipment for the level 65 version, so I will change it up. In fact, I've already built a new set for her. I just haven't quite... I just didn't equip it for this fight because it was not necessary. But yes, her new set will be a level 50 Devil Sax, and I'm not sure if I'm actually going to give her this. Lone Star Amulet, level 50. I actually picked up three of these, right? So that was level 40, and I actually put an Epic Martial Spirit into it, hence why I'm going to have a level 50 Lone Star Amulet. The big problem with this is it only kicks into effect when there are no friendly units within two blocks. And unfortunately, in this fight against Leviar, you're always attacking... Oh, sorry, in this fight against Scylla, you're always attacking Scylla with other characters within two blocks. So Lone Star Amulet, I'm not getting that plus 10% attack value that it's supposed to provide. Which is a problem. Maybe I'll give her... The other problem is, you know, I could I could give her theoretically, let's say, Leon's equipment set, like Winged Shin Guards, but the problem is the enchant, right? The enchant here is Full Moon. The enchant on Cherry is Rough Sea. So I would be losing the enchant bonus of 10% attack and 15% damage reduction. So we'll see. All right, so that is Cherry's equipment set, right? Elwin's equipment set, level 50 Seal Guardian, level 50 Overlord's Badge, and then, yeah, an Aces Helmet, level 50, and Carbon Fiber Armor, level 40. This really should be upgraded, because, but there's absolutely no priority for that. He's tanking hits fine, right? Actually, it's the hit is being tanked mostly by the mass mates anyways, so damage doesn't even go through to Elwin, hence his defense doesn't particularly matter. Alright, so there was Elwyn, there was Cherry, Ledin, and Ledin's equipment set has been the exact same for a very, very long time. King's Amulet level 50, Aeneas' Helmet level 50, Gaius' Armor level 50, Oath of Justice level 50. Next up is the last character, which was... Le oh no, second last character, because I haven't talked about my healers, right? Liana, still using a lot of SR items. Crystal Ball level 50, Greenleaf Coat level 50. Sage's hat is best in slot, pretty much, so that's fine. And then she has a blue moon, level 50 as well. It's because I have blue moon that my Liana has so much intelligence. I really do actually want to give her a level 50 holy ring, because the holy ring would be boosting... Let me see, where is my holy rings? Okay, well, here's the other one. Because a, level, a holy ring would be boosting intelligence, 75, and it boosts intelligence by 8%. So I'd much rather take the 8% int rather than the 10% healing effect. I heal less, but on the occasional turn where Liana does a range attack, it makes a difference. Okay, so there was Liana, and the last character is Chris. And I should mention, my Chris has Gift of Eternal Life, and this is giving her a third heal effect. So that was why Chris was able to keep all my other characters healthy. Because she would heal from her attack skill. She would heal from Faith, applying a second heal. And she would heal a third time with Gift of Eternal Life. So just an interesting note about Chris. With Gift of Eternal Life, she is perfectly configured for this fight. As I said though, you can use Almeda as long as she has equipment and you know she'll heal via Equip Master and either she uses Heal skill or Holy Word skill. The fight will end up being a bit slower, of course, because Almeda can't attack every single turn. She would attack one, you know, Holy Word, heal, and then Holy Word, right? But so it's a slightly slower fight, but it still works out just fine. Okay, so that's all my characters for this fight. I hope you found this video useful. And as I said, this is the clear where Scylla used Oceanic Horror on the first turn. I will try to create videos where. Scylla uses Summon Leviathan on the first turn, as well as Scylla using Tentacle Spawn on the first turn, but no guarantees. Thanks for watching everyone! On that note, Nitro out.